Hey guys, this week we're going to open the January My Aquarium box and we're going to have a little short discussion about should you re-substrate an existing aquarium. It's coming right up. Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech and I've got the January My Aquarium box and we're going to break this open right now. I got a Christmas present from Mike. This is a cool knife. And uh, we'll be using it this month. All right. Thank you very much. Man, this is a really awesome knife. I love this thing. So let's open this up. All right, right on top, we've got a blow-in for what appears to be uh, maybe an RO water machine, definitely a water filtration machine of some sort. And we've got the scorecard. This month's value is $38.95. And here are the sponsors. Now what I don't see are the Mega Box winners or anything like that. So maybe, I don't know if there's another card. That's interesting. That's the first time I've seen it blank on one side. Uh, right here on top we have poly filter. This is a really cool filter, and I thank Rachel O'Leary for telling me about this. Uh, she's, she's the one that really turned me on to this filter. It actually will change colors to tell you what it's filtering out of the water. If you ever see a little tiny little square, it looks like a little piece of foam or snot maybe, <laughs> that'll come in a shipment of fish. More than likely that's this stuff. Uh, it's a really, really, really excellent product. And, uh, <clears throat> oh, my little surprise from Mike. Looks to be uh, baseball related and Zippo related. And yes, <laughs> Boston Red Sox Zippo. Oh yeah. Oh, thankfully nothing in it. <laughs> Pretty cool though. Thank you very much, Mike. I don't know if I can still do that little trick. Oh yes. Let's try it one more time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Child of the 80s right there. Also, we've got the My Aquarium Box branded uh, dehydrated omnivore crumble. Sounds delicious. I can't wait to try this. I might eat it for dinner. Uh, oh, I've got something that says 4KP. And it is reef hermit crab shells. Wow, that's kind of neat. A whole bag of hermit crab shells for Kerrigan. She has any hermit crabs yet, but that's pretty neat. Those are pretty. She might like to put those in her tank anyway. And, uh, oh, looks like H2O Plants has something in here. Free plant, free Miramo moss ball with code, uh, I won't tell you, on your next, on your order of $30 or more. Yeah, free moss balls from H2O Plants. Now, H2O Plants is a company I cannot brag on enough. They are a really, really, really cool company. Justin does a great job. He's helped me out so much. Not only in uh, what is probably one of my neatest tanks right now, which is the Into the Woods tank. He provided all the moss and stuff for that. H2O Plants also provided a whole host of plants for the big tank downstairs, and it looks incredible. I actually just got my plant pack and I was kind of greedy. I busted it open and just put the stuff in right away. But my favorite thing out of that had to be the Anubis Nana which I put right in the center of my 12-gallon uh, edge. What a cool little collection of plants. Uh, H2O plants, check them out. We've got another little blow-in that kind of explains how to win the Mega Box. The Mega Box is a prize that you get. You just, you open one of these things, you do a video unboxing, you can do it with your phone, just with that one hand going in, unboxing stuff. So unbox one of these after you've gotten it anyway, and you could win a Mega Box, which is a really, really cool prize every time. What else do I have here? Oh, it's a piece of bamboo. And I believe Greg just did a video on how to sink this stuff. Also, you know, maybe Gilligan style shot glass. You could sink this. There's all kinds of little creatures and stuff that I'd love to just get in that tube and hang out. Speaking of which, this looks to be a Pleco cave. These are awesome. I don't know what it is about these things, but my Pleco's instantly run to these. It was great too, is like uh, when I was switching tanks, 
all I had to do is uh, stir up some trouble inside of my Tanko, catch some other fish. My Playco ran straight into this, just picked it up, capped it, and took him over to the new tank. Easy as pie. Easiest way to move a Playco is to have one of these, one or two of these things in your tanks ready to go for them to hide in when you're moving stuff around. Oops. We also got some My Aquarium Box root tabs. Root tabs are very handy to have, especially if you've got a nurse substrate like sand or gravel or something like that. Any kind of dirt that you've got your plants in, you can add some root tabs to and instantly make it a lot more inhabitable for your plants. And lastly, we have Aquarium Hobbyist Magazine. And this is a really, really cool magazine. Uh, I'm a little biased towards like the last issue because I was in it. <laughs> I did a whole article about the Steampunk Aquarium and uh, IFG was also had an article in it. Now, I'll have to look through this and see what all is in there, but uh, I can tell just from the cover, I'm gonna enjoy reading about it. So, very cool. And that's the My Aquarium Box this month. Woohoo, the first My Aquarium Box of 2018. Thank you guys so much. I like it. I also wanna talk about something else that comes up a lot. Uh, recently, I did a video called First Layers where I described uh, the fluorite substrate. We got all kinds of comments about people uh, having a lot of trouble with the substrate, saying it instantly goes foggy and having all these problems. I gotta tell you, I haven't had any of those problems. <laughs> and I don't really think I'm like over rinsing the fluorite and stuff. Uh, now, of course, in the big tank, I capped it with the sand, which I think helps a lot. But in other tanks, like the, the one with the zombie head and the one with the, uh, the fluval flex, uh, that's basically fluorite black, which might not be as bad as the brown, maybe, but basically I treat them all the same. I, I do the same thing each time uh, I work with one of these substrates. And a lot of times with the active substrates, like ADA aqua soil or uh, any of those, those type of soil substrates, I don't rinse them at all. But basically what happened to me uh, the first planted tank I set up was this 30 gallon. If you go back in my update videos, you might be able to find it. So that was the first tank I set up with substrate in mind, right? You know, I knew it was going to be a planted tank when I set it up. And so I picked substrate and I picked fluorite uh, for that. Basically, I did fluorite and nothing else. And I rinsed it one time uh, and I put it all in a bucket. I put a hose in there, I let the water flow, and I let the water flow over for a little bit. And of course I poured the excess water out and I poured it in the tank and then I, and I planted it the best I could and I filled it up. This was all way before I did a YouTube video. I had no videos at this point. So anyway, I filled up the tank and it was literally a big brown square for about maybe a week to two weeks. I did eventually flush all that stuff out and it ended up looking really spectacular at different periods of time in its life. But all you can do at that point is really just kind of wait it out, wait for that stuff to settle. But if you rinse it off in the way I've described in like the flex video or uh, the first layers video, you really should not have much problem. All you got to do is fill it up in a very gentle way. If you let a bunch of water run right through that substrate and then back up, of course, you're going to get some cloudy water. But I'm not getting anything from Seachem or any other brand to tell you to buy one or the other. I honestly don't care what kind of substrate you use. There's a lot of great options and I just picked the ones that have worked for me in the past. There just seems to be a lot of misconception that that stuff's instantly foggy and there's no way around it. And I gotta tell you, I've made video after video where I go from nothing to the tank fully set up in a day and uh, there's no fog or very little. You should, when you get that kind of white cloudiness in your tank, that's not the substrate, that's usually just the cycle starting to happen. New aquariums do tend to be a bit foggy at first. And that really drives at the main point of this whole thing. Uh, really, if you want to change your mind and do a planted tank, adding substrate that works great for plants to your tank that's already established is probably a bad idea. I think what you'd be much more happy with is uh, finding a temporary home for your fish. Uh, use the existing filter, bring all the fish out in the filter and as much of the water as you can into a, like a regular glass tank and house them while you completely reset the other tank. And by that, I mean pull everything out, get all that substrate out, replace it with whatever you're gonna replace it with, refill the tank again with as much of the original water as you can, let it sit for a day or two to make sure it's, everything's okay, and then move the fish back in. If you try to add fluorite, especially if you haven't rinsed it, even if you've rinsed it a whole lot, 
if you put fluorite in through a body of water, you're going to instantly get a cloud of mud. I think you probably could do this with like an aqua soil, so aqua solium, uh, ADA aqua soil, fluval stratum, all those things. You could probably add that straight in without making a huge mess, but here's the thing. But a lot of those things emit ammonia as soon as they get wet. So those first couple of days in your tank, they're kind of emitting ammonia. And an ammonia spike of any kind can be dangerous for your fish. Now, a lot of fish are really tough and they can maybe tough their way through that, but you're basically cycling with your whole tank. Whereas if your fish and everybody was out of that tank, you could just set it up really nicely, uh, set it up exactly the way you want, be a little bit more in control, and then add your fish and everything later when things calm down. Now this might mean you gotta hit up a Petco dollar per gallon sale and uh, get you a 40 gallon, 20 gallon, something like that tank. That's basically what I've done. Everything I had to do when I was moving fish around, uh, I, went to, I went to a dollar per gallon sale, I got a 55 gallon tank and I just tried to make that work for everything that I had. Now in reverse, if you've got a substrate, if you're just adding thickness to it, so you're using maybe pool filter sand, or you're using uh, just plain gravel of some sort, if you rinse it out a little bit, the gravel that is, if you rinse it out a little bit and then add it in, it's just gonna drift straight down and probably won't cause too much of a turmoil. Now you can use just like plain rocks and gravel and sand and stuff like that with the addition of root tabs. <laughs> root tabs are great if you're planting in stuff that really wasn't made specifically for plants. This is kind of the, the great equalizer there. I've used these, I've used a bunch of different versions and uh, they work great. Okay guys, I hope that helped some of you that maybe had that question in your mind and that's just my opinion on it. I'd love to hear your opinion. Please do so in the comments down below. Until next time, follow your bliss, keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech and I stuffed my teeth. Should not have eaten peanuts before I came in. <clears throat> really incredible filter and I think uh, Rachel, let's say her name. All right, so I hope that hope, I hope that hope. All right, I hope that hope, I did it again. H2O plants also provided a whole host of plants for the big tank downstairs. Back back there. Back back.